Well, hello. Oh, I'm going to have to turn off my sound. Ooh, let's see if I can do this without making it really weird. I need to turn off the sound on my computer. Okay, that's better. Now when it finally comes up on my computer, I'll be live. Uh, it's, there I am. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I am so excited, not just to be here with you, but of course that too. Hi, Sheila. Uh, I'm also excited because we've got snow coming and I know that that's necess not necessarily a popular sentiment with everyone around where I live, but I like snow and we're gonna get a good amount, I think. So, yay me. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna put this in the holder so I stop shaking and uh, we'll, we're gonna get started. I'll, I have some things to talk about with you too, but let me turn you around first. All right, so let's uh, put you in the holder here. All right, gotta get rid of some of my some of my stuff so I can have a clear space. I have my glass mat. Um, I'm not gonna use it tonight. I'm trying to find uh, some better lighting options because as I bring this on, you can see that you've got the these lights right here. Uh, well, you can't see them. Um, well, there you go. Those lights are, um, I don't like the glare of them. So, but this is the glass mat that Stampin' Up! is now offering as part of the starter kit. So there are two options during celebration. Oh, I should mention that. We are in celebration right now. Here's a celebration catalog. So for every $50 you spend, you get to earn a selection out of here. So this watercolor melon stamp set this is a free $50, uh, free with a $50 purchase. However, I have a special going on this celebration that if throughout celebration, your orders total $150 in product, then I will give you this stamp set and a class using, uh, that creates four cards with it for free um, in early March. Um, so if you think you're gonna get up to that total, don't let this be one of your sets. Um, it has some Sunny Days Designer Series paper, which is bright and cheery. Got this Flight and Airy Bird paper here. And today is the fifth, I think, yes. And today is National Bird Day. Uh, so that's kind of appropriate. I put a post up about that earlier. And uh, so really, really pretty paper. Um, Cradled in Love, which a couple of my team members uh, fell in love with and already have and have used to make some baby cards. This softly stippled paper is also very nice. I posted or am posting or will post something, I don't know, a card that I made with that during um, at, a, at my celebration kickoff. And then there's this most adored designer series paper that's got a metallic uh, element to it and uh, some just some really pretty uh, red and pink here. Heartfelt hellos, this goes with that uh, heartfelt hexagon stamp set and the hexagon punch. Trusty toolbox, which goes with a toolbox set that's in the main, uh, the mini catalog. And these Jungle Pals, which I think I shared that with you last time. I shared um, last week, well, this is part of the card. Um, I cut it off too close, so. Um, but this was part of uh, one of my swaps that I did. So you can get the Jungle Pals set, but also there's the option of the um, dies as well. Ooh, things look a little, looks like I'm having trouble streaming. At least on my computer it's showing that way, so that's not good. I'm not exactly sure. Let me close a couple of tabs. I don't have a ton open. Um, but let me see if I can make this a little bit better for y'all. I'm not exactly sure why, why it's so bad. 
Oh, now I got a message. I don't know what this message says. Uh, hold on, I gotta move my camera. Up hmm. oh, here, I'm back. I think I'm back. I am back. I am sorry. I don't know what was going on. We've had a little bit of. problems but I think I'm back now so I don't know we'll uh we'll see if this if you catch up I'm watching it on on uh my screen so hopefully I'm coming back shortly oh look at that I had a subscribe button pop up I better subscribe to my own channel so I can see that things are very very uh blurry some, there's something with the internet connection, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Um, everything looks fine on my end, but let's see. It looks like it's cleared up, so let's hurry through this. Um, so then there's um, the $100 option, and that is you get a stamp set and an embossing folder, which this is a really pretty embossing folder. Um, and then there's the detailed dogwood stamp set, which is a $100 level. And then there are a couple of this glass mat, which is where I started this conversation at. This glass mat is a $60 value and it is, um, it comes with this nifty little um, silicone tray, sticks right on there nicely. Um, I guess it goes this way because the Stampin' Up! logo is right here. Um, and you can use these as ink wells or just to put doodads so they don't run away on you, all that stuff. But I'm not gonna use this tonight because of the glare. So, uh, if you guys could just chime in and make sure I know that you're still with me, that would be great. It looks like you're still with me. Um, but anyway, so the there are two options for starter kits. One is that glass mat in addition to the $125 worth of merchandise that you get to choose. And the other is instead of $125 worth of merchandise, you get $155 worth of merchandise to select for only $99 and also oh thank you and letting me know I'm okay now um, and free shipping no matter which starter kit and then I just want to point this out that I have a mystery stamping event coming up on Sunday mystery stamping in the snow and um, it's Sunday at two o'clock the price is ten dollars and um, I'm going to do three mystery projects. I will email out those who register um, by uh, tomorrow morning. I mean, technically you can register later, but definitely by Saturday night, you have to have registered. And um, we'll, I'll give you the supply list, the stuff that you can use at home. Everything's gonna look different, but I'm, we're gonna do some mystery stamping. Uh, at least two of the projects are going to be fun folds. And in addition to that, basically what is a class, I'm going to be doing bingo with some prizes. I thought that would be a great way to celebrate the snow because you know, I love snow. So anyways, if you'd like to register for that, there is a link um, in on my Facebook page, but also check your email if you're on my email list because you would have gotten this email. All right, let's start. We are going to be using the apparently retired One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper. So this was an online exclusive, and I'm just trying to reach for the pack here. Had a bunch of, lots of really pretty wintry scenes here. Well, there you go, lots of snowy scenes. And apparently this has retired now because it's no longer online. And that's the thing about the online exclusives. If there's something that's an online exclusive that you see that you like, you need to get it before it goes away. Because once it's gone, it is gone. Now, let me try to find the piece of paper that I just was using, I wanted to use tonight. Well, where is it? goodness there we go that's the piece I wanted to use tonight and um, so not only is this designer series paper gone now but 
The one, the horse and sleigh bundle is also gone. And so this was the horse and sleigh bundle. And while it does have some kind of a Christmassy feel to it, you know, sending warmth your way, that's what we're gonna be using tonight. And you know, anybody can take a sleigh ride. It's hard to take a sleigh ride near Christmas anymore because we don't usually have snow in time, but January, February, March, yeah, we got snow then. So we're going to be using this as, along with the bundle, uh, the dies as well. So let's kind of get started with that. Um, let's go ahead and look at the card itself, the base itself, I think. Should we do that first or should we? Nope, let's stamp first because if I don't stamp first, I mean, it's always a good idea to let things dry a little bit first. So we're gonna stamp. So I've already got my horse and sleigh stamp mounted on a big block. And I'm gonna take my memento ink here and just ink it up. I'm gonna be coloring with my blends. Anybody do any stamping today yet? Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna just set that aside for just a second. We're gonna color that, but let me set up the card base first. Let's move that out of the way. So I'm gonna begin with a piece of garden green. Uh, and I picked garden green because there's some in with the trees here. And this is four and a quarter by 11. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to score it at five and a half, so in half, score it. But then what I also wanna do is I want to cut this down to the one and a half mark. So I'm not gonna cut this bottom one and a half. I use my trimmer upside down, sorry, that's just the way I do it. Um, but I'm gonna cut until I see that the side points here are at the one and a half mark. So I've cut down quite a bit on that score line. Then I'm gonna turn this, and the one and a half mark right here is right to this, uh, where the white meets the, um, the gray edge here. And I'm gonna cut to where that other cut was. So I'm gonna cut it to the, to the score mark. And that takes this little piece out. And you can save that for something else. We're not gonna use it though. I'm gonna fold on this little piece right here. And I've got my bone folder around somewhere, but you know, it's Friday night and I just got back from the main diner eating, so I didn't have much time to clean up. So things just kind of went whoop. And I'll find it later when I really clean. If I have any luck at all, I'm gonna have lots of cleaning time this weekend. So now I have a piece of pool party because again, that's a, that's a color that's in here. And this piece of pool party is five and three eighths by four and one eighth. So it is just an eighth of an inch smaller than the card base size when folded. Well, and you're playing with your die cuts. That's uh, you know that's a necessary step. Get all that done, and then you can then you can make some cards with them. Okay. So here I have that, and I think I'm gonna put one over here as well. This is going to be a little bit of a unique card in that I'm not going to have a white piece inside to write with. This pool party is light enough so that we can use this. And so this piece, 
because the, the green is one and a half inches wide, this piece of pool party is one and three eighths by five and one eighth. All right, so that's that area. I'm also gonna bring in that same measurement again and put this one on the front. Okay, oops. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I am gonna cheat it a little bit to the top though. I probably should have cut it a little bit wider. You know what, I'm gonna do that. I'll have the measurements on my blog and of course only you can you can only recreate it if you happen to have uh, this bundle of course but the the deal will work the same if you have um, you know something else that you want to stamp with as well this is just really a fun fold Sorry, I had to go across the room to get my other piece of pool party. That's the problem with having it in back of me. Oh, but look, I found it right as I came back. So I'm just gonna cut this down. So this is one and, this is one and uh, five, one and a half. And I'm just gonna come just under one and a half. I'll explain why in just a second. I can't cut and talk at the same time. Well, I guess I can because I just did. So what I want to do here is I want to not have any green border along the top. You'll see why in a little bit. So I just have to cut it a little bit wider so that there's still this green edge showing down here, but see, it looks like this is one whole piece. All right, so that's what we have. Now, I think um, I'm gonna wait on cutting this, but let's go ahead and color for a little bit right now. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kind of quickly color. I'm using, I think, Petal Pink for their faces. Maybe I'll make them two different skin tones. This is the SU-800. This is one of the neutrals tones. It goes on kind of dark, but I'm gonna take my little lightener in both cases and lighten those skin tones up. And I guess I need to do his hands as well. Although I really should have put mittens on him probably just because it's cold out. Why would he be driving that horse with his bare hands? That doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, so now we've got that. Let's bring in some other colors here. Now in this background, I've got this little cabin and it kind of, it's not quite the pecan pie. I think it's more like the copper, but I bet the back would tell me it's pecan pie, but I like it. I like it warmed up a little bit with the copper. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't have any copper in here, but it does say pecan pie. Too bad. I'm going with the copper because there's a little red in the door here too, so I think it kind of looks coppery. I just want a little bit of a warmer tone. So I'm going to bring in my light copper clay. Just very gently brush with the side of my marker. I don't want to ruin those ends. I want to keep them as nice as I can. Seems like it's been a while since I've really done much coloring. I kind of miss it. I do find it a little therapeutic. Obviously, it's not, it's not great when you have a lot of Christmas cards to do in a little bit of time. And then I'm going to, I think this over here is the inside of the sleigh. I'm making it such anyways. So there we go. And let's bring in the darker copper clay, which... 
should be somewhere, but I cannot. Oh, it's right up in the holder where it's supposed to be. Look at that. I'm going to just come in here a little bit and darken these edges. Give it some depth. Um, and I think uh, right under here, because this other part sticks out a little bit, I think. And then I'll come back with my light and I'll blend that in a little bit. Some small circular motions here. And it's a little bit darker now. It will blend out. It will get um, a little bit lighter as it dries. So I'm not going to worry too much. Okay. And then we need to give his coat some color. I just brought in a gray. Um, that's dark, smoky slate. I'm going to give him a light gray coat. Nice neutral color. And they've got the blanket on them, so I'm going to call that good for there. Um, some other colors that are in here are Lost Lagoon. So I'm going to bring in the Lost, the Dark Lost Lagoon. And let's see, let's, uh, let's go ahead and color what I think is a blanket. So all in here, it's just folded up in many different portions for them. They're nice and cuddled up warm in there. I envision this thing right there being like a muff that she's wearing. I'm going to bring in a light pool party. I'm going to give her a, a nice light pool party. Is this pool party? Yeah, it's light pool party. I'm going to give her a nice jacket. Matching hat. And let's give him... I think I want a little bit more Lost Lagoon. I want to make the blanket a little bit darker. And there we go. Just differentiates a little bit there. And then go ahead, I'm going to bring in the light pool party and color this little pillow. And for his hat, we're going to give him a darker gray hat. I know this looks really dark right now. It does lighten a little bit, though, as it dries. All right, now for the horse, what I wanted to do was I did bring in the pecan pie for the horse, but I didn't want my horse to just be, um, you know, pecan pie. Uh, so... I think what I did was I wanted him to be this kind of lighter color that's, that I used on her skin, except for I, I'm not gonna lighten it on the horse. So I don't know what the specific horse is that has this kind of sh color on it, but they're very pretty. And here's in between there. I should look up and see if anybody's talking to me. Nope, nobody's talking to me, so I'll just keep coloring. Hope you all had a great day. Mine was busier than anticipated. Because now I'm also responsible at work for some of the facility stuff, which means that, you know, outside plowing. I'm not plowing, I'm just lining people up to do it and stuff. And, snow blowing even though i don't think we're gonna have church on sunday still gotta maintain the parking lot if you know what i mean here's a uh, pecan pie this one's the dark i'm gonna give him darker tail i'm 
and we'll give him some darker stuff around his hooves. And actually, we'll probably make his hooves the lighter of the pecan pie. So they're darker, but they're just not as dark as the fur around them. And they probably are the same, they should be the same color fur, but fur, not fur, ain, whatever, I don't know. I really shouldn't color and talk at the same time. It's probably entertaining for you. Happy to entertain you. All right, so there's my, there's my little horse. I'm gonna come back in with the copper clay just so that I can, um, I'm kinda, I'm gonna color coordinate him. I'm imagining this to be leather right here. There we go. So our horse is done, our sleigh is colored. Time to put my markers away. And we're gonna die cut this. So let's go ahead and get that die out. And I've got some washi tape here. All right, now there's seven of you watching. Surely some other people can chime in other than Sheila and Anne as to what the weather's like, where they are, or what you're doing. Like I know what you're doing right now, but. So I'm just gonna line this up. It's a long one, so I wanna make sure that all the sides are looking pretty good. I'm even gonna put two pieces of washi on this, I think. That's pretty good. All right, let's bring in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we need our cutting plates. So here we go, there's one, two, and three right there. My dies. Oh, I put my handle on the wrong side. There we go. It's almost like I don't know what I'm doing. But I do, my friends, I do. All right, so you can see these three pieces right here. That's part of the bottom of the sleigh, so that cuts that portion out. Let me just take off my tape carefully and I'll show you. So it cuts out this little area between the reins and the sleigh. And it cuts out actually these four little pieces between the runners. And slice it right there, see? There's also a die in here um, that you can put some like metallic runners over there if you, if you die cut it out of the metal or the metallic foils. That's pretty too, but I'm not gonna do that tonight. It's gonna take long enough, just do this card. All right, so now we here are here ready to cut this piece. And I kind of have a sense of what I wanna do here. So bear with me. I wanna cut some of the top off because I only want about a three inch wide strip. And I want the house to be up as as high up there as you know you know pretty pretty reasonable up there so let's see i just need to figure out where that's about that's about right i think and i said i wanted this three inches so i'm going to now turn it around and cut it at three inches all right and then remember we've got this bottom front piece here and i'm going to want this to be, so since the whole thing is one and a half, I want it to be one and three eighths. I want it to be one and, yes, three eighths. Oh, I hope that's right. We're gonna make it right. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, I need to cut it again because we need to, we need this, this piece right here to be five and one quarter inches. 
and I want to cut a little bit off each side, I think. So I'm going to cut this to five and a half. I'm going to cut a half an inch off the left, and I'm going to cut a quarter inch off the right. So on this piece of paper, I'm going to cut a half an inch off the left. I'm doing the same thing and a quarter of an inch off the right. That's just so my papers all line up fairly nicely. All right, so this piece right here is gonna go right up there. I just realized that I'm gonna be in trouble if I misstamped the sayings because I've already put these pieces down, but we're gonna live on the edge a little bit. They are photopolymer, so if it doesn't stamp well, I can stamp over the top of it again, probably. So there's that scene and I can write down here. And then if I put this right up here, see it almost looks like this tree continues, which is great. That was the whole point of me cutting like that. And if you didn't know that there was a gap there, you would think that that's one whole sheet. And that's the intent I was going for. That continuity. Oh, I'm frozen again. Oh, okay, I'm unfrozen now. Thanks, Sheila. Okay, that frozen one was my fault. Um, I was not in the red when I started, but I'm in the red now, so that's, 20%, I got 20%, I'm not gonna die before it goes out, but it, when it gives me the 20% warning or the 10% warning, it freezes. All right, so now here we have our card. All we gotta do is we gotta put our little horse on here. Now, we there there will be this that shows on the back. I'm not, I'm not bothered by that. Hopefully nobody else is too, but if you were, what you could do is die cut another one of these. And um, you know what, let me show you what you could do if you don't like seeing the back of this. Let me show you really quickly how you can do that. And that goes for anything that you're doing. Um, you know, whatever it is, the project that you're working on, this will be a way to make the the back of something that's been colored with blends prettier again. Most of the time, it's a, a simple shape that you're probably trying to, you know, to mount or that you've colored. But if it's not, this is a really pretty simple solution. All right, let's get this out of here. We'll take care of that afterwards. So now, if I were to just glue these two pieces together perfectly, look, the back is now clean. So that is how you can change this to a cleaner look on the back. But even still, it's, it's not, I mean, ideally it would be great if this looked like a horse and a sleigh and the people just from the other angle, um, but that's not the case. That's all right, I'm just gonna use it just like this. And because this has a thickness to it, it's, it's three pieces of cardstock and a DSP. I am not going to uh, mount this on dimensionals. It doesn't need it. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here on the bottom. And I'm not going to go very high with the glue, just one little streak there. Because I want this to stick up quite a bit. We just peek from the other side. No glue showing, that's good. All right, so here we have, here we have our, our little snow scene right there. So that's the outside of the card. Ooh, I like this card. And then on the inside, what we can do is we can take 
this sentiment, um, not that one, it must be this one. Sending warm, sending warmth your way, which Anne has already told us that it's a cold night. So for those of you that may be watching that aren't in cold territory, like I haven't heard from Reba yet. Reba's usually on. She'll probably watch the replay. Um, for those of you who, you know, are in a warmer climate, it is cold up here. So sending warmth your way is a really good sentiment to put right in here. And then I have right here that I can write a little note and sign my name. If you want to put on some embellishments, some little gems, or some, some of these snowflakes. That, these are not retired. I mean, they're, they're I think, maybe low inventory. Um, but these are the ones that kind of coordinated. Like, I could use... I could use some of these. I, I can't bring myself, honestly, though, to use copper snowflakes on, on these cards. I, it's just, I just can't do it. So I'll take some of these white snowflakes, though, and I'll put these, these guys on there. And, of course, we need one more, and I don't have any more little ones. So we'll just use a medium-sized one. And put that down here. Okay. And there is our card. What do you think? I'm kind of sad. This all this stuff is retired. Well, except for the snowflakes. Kind of sad about it, not gonna lie, but that's alright. I've still got plenty of the paper left. I've got pretty much a whole pack. So I can make some nice wintry cards still. And I can um, if I'm thinking about it, I can make some Christmas cards for next year to help me then not be as stressed out as I was this year. All right, so I'm not going to fight with putting these back in. Here's our card. I'll send that to somebody. Maybe this week because it's almost like a celebration of winter. Uh, so somebody who doesn't like Winter is going to probably get this card and appreciate it, even if they can't appreciate the snow. So just a reminder, if you would like to sign up for my, uh, can't find it, it's gone, my, my uh, bingo, oh, here it is, my mystery stamping in the snow with bingo. Look for that link. If you need, if you can't find it, you can email me stamperhood at gmail.com and I will get you that registration link. Uh, I will send you a digital bingo card at this point because it won't reach you in time in the mail. Um, so let me know if you don't get one, that's for sure, because this is going to be fun. Play for some prizes, new product, and during this mystery stamping, I'm going to show you a bunch of new product that comes from this catalog and the Celebration brochure. So I hope you can join me and have a great night, everybody.